Hello YouTube, this is Bub's Comics coming at you with a comic haul. Uh, this is going to be a mix between my, um, oh let's see, so there's some of this stuff, with stuff that my wife got me for Valentine's Day. She got me a, um, a credit, like a gift, rec a gift card to mycomicshop.com, which I absolutely love that she does that. It's like an e-gift card so she can send me the code and I get to buy whatever I want, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, sometimes I save it up and then sometimes I spend it right away. This time I already had a cart full of stuff I wanted, so I spent it real quick. Uh, and then some of these are stuff that I picked up uh, this past weekend at an LCS, so at a not so LCS. Uh, so we'll start off with some of those first. Oh, and then also an eBay pickup, so we got quite a bit. So we'll rifle through these first few. Uh, Devil Dinosaur number three, I already had a copy of this. I didn't know that I already had a copy of this. <laughs> I just picked it up. I think it's like in a haul video, like a couple, maybe like three or four videos ago. Uh, but I already had it. But yeah, that happens. Uh, but I picked up another one. Uh, I'm pretty sure it is an upgraded copy though, because my last one had quite a bit of water damage on the edge, because I had only picked it up for a buck. <coughs> this one I spent like three or four bucks on, so I was happy to have it. So Devil Dinosaur number three trying to complete this run there's nine total I already had well apparently I already had one two and three and I got three again uh, here's number four real nice copy of that one and these are all in those nice uh, max lights uh, and as far as the backing boards and these max lights go I put uh, regular size which is six and seven eighths because a lot of them are miscut so they were miscut to be right at seven and a silver age board is seven so in order to make up the difference, I use a six and seven eighths uh, board, a regular size board, it fits in there perfect. Uh, here is, look at that, and that's some great Kirby art, man, I'm telling you. This Devil Dinosaur run has got some great cover photos and interiors too. Uh, here's Devil Dinosaur number seven, so I'm missing number six still, as you can see. It's pretty cool there. And uh, here's Devil Dinosaur number eight. So only missing six and nine from that run. I love these tiny little runs. Um, you know, a lot of people collect the Marvel uh, four, you know, limited series four four run comics. I have some of those, but you know, I like some of the Bronze Age ones, but others I'm not crazy about. Uh, but I do like the short runs. I like them when they're like this. But a full set of a volume one that's only nine. Holy cow, man! That's a super big win for me. I love it. So I picked those up at an LCS. This is another one I picked up at an LCS. Look at this. Boom! The Rocketeer Official Movie Souvenir Magazine. As you all know, I'm a big Rocketeer fan. My wife had also got me this for uh, Valentine's Day as well. So it's a little door Rocketeer. Pretty cool. Now that Funko makes a uh, full-sized uh, Funko Pop Rocketeer, but they get kind of pricey. So uh, this one's pretty cool though. Look at that helmet. I love that. Nice color on this. And they have some chase ones or something that are like all silver, like black and white type looking. But why would you ever want to give up on that copper and leather look? That's fantastic. I think I'll wear khakis today just in honor of that. So <laughs> next we got, uh, so we got the Rocketeer official movie magazine. Super sun faded. You can see there where the sticker used to be. That's the color. Uh, there was probably a sticker on a bag and that was laying over the comic or you know it was bagged in a in uh, and the sticker was on the bag so you can see from where the sticker was what the color really should be so it gives you an idea of just how sun faded this is but still pretty cool um, the interior kind of goes through the whole story of the Rocketeer movie which they changed a little bit you know for the movie based off the comic but actually Dave Stevens the creator of the Rocketeer was like an executive producer or whatever on um, the Rocketeer movie so he was involved um, uh, co-creating that movie so it's pretty faithful to the to the comic as, as, as good as you would want it to be so there you go Rocketeer official movie souvenir magazine by Tops. really happy to have that let's keep the Rocketeer action rolling here is the rock special edition the Rocketeer special edition from EC com or Eclipse comics right uh, by Dave Stevens you got a nice Betty Page action down there at the bottom fantastic um, what's cool about this is that this is actually chapter five of the Rocketeer story of which there are eight chapters uh, spanning across I think four different titles so you really or five even so you really gotta you know 
<laughs> you got to hunt it all down. A lot of people will say, oh, it's based on a graphic novel. It's actually not based on a graphic novel. It's based on eight chapters of a story that spanned across all these different comics. Now, there is a graphic novel that collects them all, and it's pretty cool, too. And Maybe I'll get that someday, but I kind of like to go back and get the original appearances instead because uh, then you get all this great cover art which you know i'm sure inside the graphic novel they show some of that but there's nothing like holding the actual comic it's pretty cool uh here is chapter six uh they moved it to the rocketeer adventure magazine so there you go there so i've shown it in previous hauls but prior to this chapter one is in star slayer 2 chapter 2 is in star slayer 3 chapter 4 is in um uh, Pacific presents uh, number one and chapter five or chapter four right chapter one chapter two chapter three is in specific uh, Pacific presents chapter uh, Pacific presents one <laughs> chapter four is in Pacific presents two chapter five is in Rocketeer special edition by Eclipse comics um, then it moves to Kimiko here in the Rocketeer adventure number one Rocketeer Adventure Magazine number one. It's pretty cool. Dave Stevens art right there. Really big on Dave Stevens right now. Uh, here is Rocketeer Adventure Magazine number two. This contains chapter six of the story of eight. Pretty cool there. Then it has the Rocketeer Adventure number three. Look at that. And that says the final act and that's the final uh, chapter. So I guess that's all of them. I should have all eight. So I don't know if my numbers are right. They're probably not. Who knows? It's early. So there you go. That's pretty cool. Look at that in the background. That's pretty tough. That says it's by Paul Chadwick and Dave Stevens. So that's pretty cool. I like that, the final act. So there you go. So that is all eight of the uh, Rocketeer chapters. Keeping it rolling. Um, <laughs> more Dave Stevens work here. Uh, these are books that I picked up. Um, also with my Valentine's Day uh, loot. So here is Seduction of the Innocent number one. This is the 3D run that they did. So 3D Seduction of the Innocent number one and that's a Dave Stevens cover as well. So look at that. Pretty cool. Sharp corners. Excellent condition. Um, you know you gotta love that Dave Stevens a good girl art. She looks fantastic. Very nice. Trick or treat. I think that's a treat. But look down here. Blech. Look at that guy. <laughs> got all those pumpkin heads. Some of them are happy. Some of them look menacing. And then you got that dead guy's head right there. So pretty cool. You know, to me, it's a very um, Bronze Age horror feel to it. You know, these were done in the 80s, but I just, he really did a great job capturing that kind of style. And uh, his kind of pinup work is just fantastic. So uh, here is Seduction of the Innocent 3D number two, and that's a Bernie Wrightson cover. And that looks fantastic too. Look at that guy just being drugged down by the neck, uh, tied to a boulder or whatever, and getting tossed in the water into like a murky swamp. Looks really good. So I know it's a little macabre, but I think it's pretty cool art. Look at the terror in that guy's face. Just great stuff. Boy, Bernie Wrightson, master of the macabre. Uh, next we have another one I picked up in that run and it's the Human Torch number one uh, Marvel Comics group Human Torch number one and one of the reasons that I picked this up I saw somebody show it in the hall I can't remember who it was but I absolutely fell in love with it when I saw it and um, here it is it says uh, the torch of yesteryear and Johnny Storm of today so as many of you may know uh, the old Human Torch is not the new Human Torch, it's the old Human Torch, and he was like an android. Uh, he wasn't actually a, a person and has basically no relation to the current Human Torch, Johnny Storm, the Fantastic Four version of the Human Torch. But as you can see, they definitely do. <laughs> They're basically the same character. If you didn't know any story, uh, they would look the same, and uh, they have the same name, and they appear in a comic together, identifying the two as the old Human Torch and the new Human Torch. So some people say, well, there's no connection between the two. But I say there is a connection between the two. It's just another version of the character. And people tend to identify more with the Johnny Storm Human Torch, so that's fine. But that doesn't mean that he's the first Human Torch, and it doesn't mean that, that the original Human Torch isn't 
the one from the golden age. He is. So this is just the second human torch. And if you like that one better, fine. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But same thing I feel with the Ghost Rider, um, with what later became the Knight Rider, uh, and I think the Ghost Spectre or something, or Spectre Rider or something like that. But anyway, Human Torch number one, just a cool cover. I like seeing the Golden Age. I'd like to get Ghost Rider number 50, uh, which is the pairing of the Golden Age Ghost Rider and the Bronze Age Ghost Rider, or modern, if you will. Uh, next, we have a book I've been looking forward to. Uh, this is Batman 608. Uh, I think it's like C or something. So it's not the it's not the first print. This is the New York Post exclusive uh, print. So this is the promotional one, and I absolutely love it. It has no price tag on it. Um, this New York Post exclusive, super cool. Um, it's got the Batman, you know, uh, boot Jim Lee art. I already have the 608B. Uh, where he's standing on the gargoyle. I've got that graded at a 9.0, but I didn't have the um, the A cover, and I guess I still don't because this is a New York Post exclusive version of it, but this is the one that I wanted because I'm from New York and I grew up you know, with the New York Post at every newsstand, so I thought this was pretty cool to have. So this is the version of the regular cover that I'll keep as a reader. Now, I'm not gonna grade that or anything. Just keep it as a reader, I really like it. So stand up there, Hardak. All right. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, we have a slab I picked up on eBay. Um, got a fantastic deal, messaged the seller. Uh, really, it was already at a good deal, but whenever I see a best offer, I always offer, I mean, shoot, sh shoot them $10 less and see what happens. You, you, can't, you can't really lose. You know, if they don't accept it, then still buy it now for what you want. But you shoot them a, an offer $10 less, and he came back, I think I shot him an offer at um, $15 less in this particular case, and he shot me back, would you do 10 less? I was like, yeah, absolutely, and I took it. So here's Crossfire uh, number 12, another great Dave Stevens cover. Um, it didn't come with this rubber thing. I put that on there because this is actually one of the old C, uh, CGC cases. It's at a 9.4. So the old CGC cases, you could put these rubber bumpers on, and uh, I think they're pretty cool but I don't have uh, a lot of comics that fit with them. Um, the PGX cases fit in there good. I hear that they're gonna be changing their cases soon too, but the PGX case fits in there. The CBCS case fits in there, but it's a little tight. It doesn't fit as well. And the best fitting um, case to put in there is an old CGC case. They fit absolutely perfect. Like you hear it snap tight when you put it on there and that's what you wanna hear. Uh, so here's a great Dave Steven cover from 85. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, a lot of, I've heard people say uh, that this comic is like rapey or something. I don't really know what that's supposed to mean exactly. Because uh, it's not. If you know the uh, story at all, uh, basically what's going on is that that's a Marilyn Monroe impersonator. And she has died. So like these celebrity impersonators are getting killed off. And Crossfire is checking on her and he, you can see he's checking her pulse and he's just in shock that she's been killed so he's not going to do anything to her he's actually he's the hero of the story and he's just checking her out making seeing what's going on and he finds out that she's dead you know so that's all uh but i really like this cover and if you're hunting dave steven covers there's only a few that are really sought after but this is one of them um so really really like this one and uh there you go so Crossfire number 12, and that completes our haul for today. So I want to thank you all for uh, joining me, and, you know, I'll catch you on the next one. Read a comic. Thanks. Bye.